Today, we're making a graveyard skeleton statue that we've named Forever Embrace. This twin statue can be built as a standalone statue or as a graveyard base. So join me for this awesome tutorial. To begin, we need a floor flange and an adapter. This is one and a half inches and this floor flange is one and a half inches as well. So everything that I use on my channel, I link it directly to the video. So if you click the more option below, it'll show you the links to everything that I ever use so it's easy for you to find the same thing. Once we've screwed that in, we're gonna use four screws. They're probably gonna be one and a half or two inch screws, and we're going to attach it to our piece of board. Now this board is pretty thick. This one is a 12 by two, and we've cut it to about 36 inches. I'm using this thick of a board because we need something heavy for the base. You could use something thinner, but I'm always going. So 12 inches by two inches, and this is 36 inches that we cut it at. So we have our PVC, this one's been cut to about 30. We're going to put it into the adapter just like this. And this one as well is one and a half inches. Push it in just like that. So once we've attached it, it'll be upright like this. That's when we bring the skeleton in. So for the skeleton, you can find them at any big box store. And I have these from Lowe's. And I've taken apart the legs. As you can see, no legs here anymore. And it's gonna go like this. We're going to attach it nicely. I'm actually gonna cut the PVC just a little bit more so it's just below the collarbone, but then we're gonna use some zip ties to hold it together just like this. This is the most important part because this will give it stability. Since we're gonna be doing two skeletons, we're gonna do the exact same thing for the next one. Once we've got them screwed in and once we zip tie them, then we can get our heat gun to start forming the arms and the neck because we need to give it a different form. I wanted to take a quick moment to mention the first book I've written. It's called Little Olive and the Wally Bat, and it's available on Amazon via paperback or Kindle. It's rated for kids ages two to six years old, and it follows a brave little olive that gets lost and is found by a very helpful brown bat. If anyone wants to support me or read it to their little ones, go check it out, Little Olive and the Wally Bat on Amazon. Now let's get back to this amazing tutorial. And all I'm using are these extra long zip ties. And I put a zip tie right here on the top and one on the bottom. The same thing is gonna happen when we put the next skeleton up right over here. We're gonna do the same method, just like that. But the second one, this one over here, I think I'm gonna make it just a few inches taller. And we can do that by using the, pi the PVC pipe behind us for support, just a bit taller so that his head can be tilting slightly and this one's head can be tilting slightly as well. So let's finish that up really quickly. Once we've attached them all, we're gonna get our heat gun and we're going to start applying heat to the areas that we need to bend, notably the neck and the arms because these positions don't work for us. So we're gonna be using heat over here to bend these arms in different angles to give us something better to work with. So the next part is super simple. I have some tape right here and I'm wrapping the rib cage with tape. We need to fill the inside with expanding foam. So we're gonna use Big Gap and Crack by Great Stuff Expanding Foam and we're gonna fill the inside cavity. Any foam that comes out, we can easily cut off. We just need it to be more of a solid 
um, rib cage. So let's cover it with tape really quickly and we're just doing it cutting pieces and just putting it on the outside like this. Just like that. We'll fill it in and then we'll let it dry for a couple of hours. So once we remove the tape, we get our foam cutting knife and we cut off any excess foam or shave off places that we don't need. The next part is essentially how we finish the statue. We need to coat it with monster mud. Now monster mud is a mixture of two or three ingredients, normally joint compound and exterior grade paint. You mix those two together and then you dip the fabric or whatever you're using into that mixture. We are going to apply it to our statue and after about 24 to 48 hours, it'll fully cure and harden. Now I made an amazing tutorial on how to make monster mud. I'm gonna to try to link it right up there. I show you four different recipes, four different ways to make monster mud. My favorite is the third recipe, which includes dry lock. So we're gonna be using exterior latex paint, joint compound, and dry lock. That's the one that I found that's the best one for the outdoors. So check out that video, go see how to make it, and come back to this one so that we can finish off this statue. For this particular statue, our measurements are gonna be different than the Monster Mud tutorial that I showed you in my previous clip. So for this particular size, we're doing half a skeleton, remember, we're gonna be using half a gallon of exterior latex paint half a gallon of dry lock, and six pounds of joint compound. The joint compound that I buy comes in 12 pound buckets, so we're just gonna be using half of it, but there's no perfect recipe for monster mud. So if you add a little bit more dry lock, a little bit more joint compound, it's perfectly fine. We want a thick, soupy consistency, and we wanna make sure that our canvas cloth that we're using is dipped and all areas of the cloth are completely covered in it. You don't need to use burlap or canvas. You can use bed sheets, you can use towels. Just know that the thicker the material is, the more material it's going to soak up and the more mix you're going to have to make. So I always use canvas drop cloths that are sold in the paint aisle of my Lowe's and that's what we're gonna be using today. Now that we've mixed everything in our five gallon bucket, we're going to get our drop cloth here and we're going to dip it very slowly. We're gonna put the entire thing inside. I'm gonna put on some latex gloves and we're gonna make sure the mixture gets on every single side of this drop cloth. Once we're done, we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna drape it on top. Also, while mixing this, I realized I needed more joint compound, so I ended up using the entire 12 gallon I'm sorry, 12 pound bucket that we had. I had said six pounds earlier, but skip that. Use the 12 pounds. It doesn't matter if you use more joint compound, the more the merrier is what I say. So now we have a thick soup consistency and we can dip it inside. So let's get to that. So I decided to add these wings to the statue. These are from Amazon, they're lightweight. I think they're made out of pleather and we attached it to the PVC pipe in the back with a couple of screws. Now, this PVC is going to get covered right now with Loctite expanding foam. And I'm using Loctite versus Great Stuff because you can mold Loctite you can't mold great stuff expanding foam. So I'm going to use Loctite all over here. It's gonna to attach these wings to the back over here. Probably gonna put some Loctite right over here, right on the top. Then I'm going to grab a spray bottle filled with water and I'm going to douse all of the Loctite. I'm going to wait three minutes. After three minutes, get some latex gloves and then you can mold the Loctite you can squish it down, mold it better so it isn't so bulky. That's what I love about Loctite. You can't do that with Great Stuff Expanding Foam. After the Loctite dries and you've molded it, we're going to cover the wings and the Loctite with Monster Mud. Now, these wings right now are pretty soft, but once we put the Monster Mud on it, it'll solidify a little bit more and it'll just be great. We will lose all of these details here, but we want it to look more like this. So it doesn't matter if you cover up all these details, we still need to paint this, we still need to shade all of this, we still have work to do on it. So let's put some uh, Loctite and then Monster Mud.
It's been three minutes and look at this. It's not sticking to our fingers because we sprayed it with our spray bottle. And now you can form it and soften it out, mold it a little bit better. And just give it the shape you want. It's still going to expand, but it won't expand as bumpy or rigid as regular expanding foam. So we'll keep doing that till we get a nice flattened shape. All right, I'm quickly gonna touch on the base, but I'm not actually gonna go into detail of how I made this because I already made another video on how to carve tombstones. There should be a drop down link on the upper right side of your screen. Click that link to see how I carve these tombstones. But I'm just gonna give you an overall look. This is insulation foam board, it is two inches thick, and we use a heat gun to give it this type of old and weather type of look and these pieces are just wooden molding pieces and you can get them on Amazon. I'm going to link a couple of the ones I use and we're just going to stick them with some insulation, I'm sorry, with some foam spray because if we use hot glue they tend to fall off when it rains. So you can put them in any way you want, you don't even have to put these on, put them on corners if you want, but I think it'll look good like this. So we use our Dremel tool we print out the words we want just from the computer on Microsoft Word. We print it out, we put it here, we glue it down, we carve it out, and then we cut it. So check out that video. It shows you everything on how to do tombstones. So for the base, I have a different type of piece right over here, and I use some expanding foam, and we're just going to cut off the excess expanding foam. This again was done with a heat gun. I sprayed it with some water. I used my heat gun. Check out that video. I promise you, you're gonna love it and you can make awesome tombstones using insulation foam board. So let's stick this and let's paint it so that we can finish with the base. And for the actual base to support it, we're using our famous styrofoam blocks. I stuck them together with some expanding foam and all of these pieces right here are just the insulation foam board that we've cut right up here, right down here. And see, we just glued this together. I normally use a wood frame, but since I had so many blocks available, this was so much easier. So if you have them, use them. If not, you can make a simple wood frame and then attach this type of board to it. So once we finish uh, the details, we can glue it all together and we're done with the base. One last little detail that I want to do on the statue is to make fake spider webs. And we're going to do it using Loctite spray adhesive. After you shake the can really good, just not close up, be about 12 inches away, spray it like this, and it'll give the effect of a spider web. And once you're done, allow it to dry, and this is what it should look like. Look at how awesome it looks.